I want to talk about your interview with Colin Powell in a moment. You just heard Bill Richardson said Colin Powell is the guy who could go to Tripoli, look Gaddafi in the eyes and say, it's over. You're leaving. Uh, you know, it's interesting. If you read Marcus Mabry's book on Condoleezza Rice, uh, he laid out how uh, Gaddafi just was uh, just in love with Condoleezza Rice. Why don't we send her? Because he has so much affection. She probably could just pull him out of uh, Libya and make this thing real simple. It sort of makes sense for Colin Powell to go, although I, don't, I doubt he wants to go. Well, they're shooting live ammunition at people who tell Co Colonel Gaddafi it's time to go. And uh, he, I don't know that he'll take kindly to that. But the president... Or Alma Powell, his wife. <laughs> so, uh, the, the, here's the, here's the, the president's political strategy problem. Uh, in 2009, there is a big protest against the undemocratic regime in Iran. It survives by the application of massive lethal force. Uh, if Gaddafi survives, there's going to be an ugly contrast where um, Iran survives, Libya survives, or Gaddafi survives, Hamas, Hezbollah, they all survive. It is the American friends who are non-democratic who are going down before this wave of protest. And um, that shows that those regimes are more open. But what will it say to wobblers, to people who are on the fence, if America's friends, in a time of crisis, they go down. America's enemies come out stronger Because you say, but, you wrote this at CNN.com, you say America's credibility right now is on the line. You agree with that? But them? you did not see, though, the same rebel forces in Iran in 2009 that you're seeing now in Libya. Uh, and they so, were and, but yeah, right. But, but again, so this is a whole different reaction. This is a civil war in Libya. Yes, right? absolutely. And, both sides are armed. Yes, and when you look at the history of civil wars uh, in uh, various countries, uh, we can talk about, as Powell told me on TV One, it's about the people there driving this and not us. And so well, I, I think, uh, uh, certainly I think the Richardson was right. International matters, not just us. Let me play a clip from your interview with Colin Powell that aired uh, on TV One over the weekend. Listen mm -hmm. to this. We have to be careful. We have to watch it. But don't just jump in because uh, the heat of the moment suggests you should jump in. If you're going to not let their planes fly, what are you going to do about the forces, the ground forces mm -hmm. that are really doing the killing? The planes don't seem to be uh, doing that much damage compared to what's going on in the ground. He makes a fair point. He makes an excellent point. Uh, you, it, people need to understand that an American intervention does not necessarily mean an invasion, and it does not necessarily mean um, the use of, he of, uh, of heavy-handed American methods. We should consider, we fought a proxy war with Gaddafi once before, in 1987, the so-called Toyota War, where Gaddafi had invaded Chad, the United States then tilted to the defense of Chad, and provided the Chadians with the weapons they needed to expel the Libyans from the country. Um, American weapons, I'm sure some American advisors uh, and American dr uh, trainers, but no American ground forces. Uh, that is the kind of thing that we need to be doing here. Now, one of the cautions that may be made, as you were saying, is we don't know a lot about these rebels, and they may not turn out to be not the mm -hmm. nicest people. Officials in the tell world. me we don't know anything about right. these. They may not be the you know, some of them may be great guys, others not so great. Uh, probably a pr the prudent assumption they're not the greatest people in the world. But the, but the thing we also need to remember here is we have a, a blood debt from Gaddafi. This is the a Lockerbie murderer. Uh, this is the man who received, the, this is one of the greatest acts of mass murder against Americans ever. The terrorist who committed that act was received by Gaddafi as an honored guest. We also have so a very basic message to send that, you know, we don't know a lot about these rebels, but we know a lot about Gaddafi, and it's unacceptable. And that's why this president, as, as uh, the governor said, must look at how do you deal with NATO, how do you deal with international. Because we also recognize Gaddafi has already tried to use America's power as saying, oh, they're, they're the ones behind this. We also have a history in the Middle East, in Northern Africa, of uh, intervening, if you will, using our power to affect what's hap what happens there politically. That's also something we must also consider. That is a dangerous precedent for us when people already say we don't like American uh, okay. presence anyway. Fair enough, but consider how will Gaddafi behave if he survives, because he has convinced himself that the United States is the cause of his crime. Do you think he can survive? I have no idea. That's I hope not. And, and, I, hope and, and, not and, and, I think we should worry, but we should not assume he's going to fall of his own weight. And that's the point. With this whole deal, it can go either way, and so our actions, we must tread very carefully, as opposed to folks just jumping up saying, absolutely, no fly zone, or let's send weapons. No, you have to understand what you're dealing with. Can you get China and Russia to agree to a resolution, at least abstain at the Security Council in favor of a no fly zone? Um, I, it doesn't look that, that way right now, and that's why the no-fly zone may not be the right way. That's another reason it may not be the right way to go. But we didn't have a U.N. resolution for Kosovo, um, where I, the American interest was probably less immediate. I don't direct. even know if, if the United States can get NATO 
unanimity on this issue. Well, look, if we've talked about President Barack Obama, give, folks giving him the Nobel Peace Prize and folks loving him internationally, this is when the president must use that goodwill internationally to affect some kind of change. But our European allies are terrified of a civil war. They're, they're worried about refugee flows. It's 200 miles from Tripoli to the nearest Italian territory, the island of Lampedusa. It's about 170 miles, to be precise. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, and and uh, they, can get, they are worried about thousands and thousands of people trying to claim refugee status. They want an early end to this situation and the only way you get an early end is for Gaddafi to go. I think the Italians might want that. I'm not so sure the other NATO allies necessarily are that, that concerned as the Italians are. Of course, but there's a history. driving cars. They also want to see this happen soon, end soon because of gas prices. Well, you heard Richardson say tap the strategic petroleum reserve right now so you can lower the price. But that's a subject we'll talk about more in the next hour. All right. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks very Wolf. much. Thank you.